growing up in the hood, young, young, young black niggas, we always say we either gonna be basketball players or rappers, mm. right? Mm-hmm. I always wanted to rap. He wasn't even big on rapping back then, right? He was more hooping and shit like that. Um, but we was always doing bad shit like breaking the cribs, breaking the houses, and stealing cars, and we was just bad as hell. But I always, me personally, I always wanted to be a rapper, so I used to always do my little rap thing. So you was rapping before uh, Rico? <laughs> he was taking it more serious before me. Mm. I'm gonna say that, but I always been rapping. You know, we freestyle. You know, we get high. We smoke, get high, we all get the rap, you know, normal hood shit. Yeah. But I always wanted to be a professional rapper since a youngin', right? Back then, Reckless didn't really express that back then, but it was in him. Mm. Freestyle, pop your shit, you know what I'm saying? You know how that shit go. So when you, when did you record your like first tracks? Like what year is this you started like, all right, I'm gonna take this serious. Okay, my first mixtape was recorded in 2012. Um, hosted by DJ Morris. Shout out DJ Morris. Um, it's called Mr. BMW. Bitches, money, weed. That was my first real yeah. mixtape. Um, but Reckless was recording before that, which is crazy, right? He was recording before that um, because Reckless moved on 75th way back then. 75th Wooga World. Uh, yeah. And that's, a, I guess, around the times where he was around the little JoJo's and the Killer Kells and the, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Those is his group of friends down that way. I wasn't living down there. Yeah. But he was rapping. He was rapping with them. And the, this is around the time where the drill era started becoming the drill era. This is when the Chief Keith was getting hot. The, uh, uh, the little JoJo's was still alive. and You know what I'm saying? So we was like, we was here in the beginning of the drill era. Like we part of the forefathers of it. Yeah. So y'all see all the motion that's going on between Chief Keith, you know, Dirk having his wave, Louie at the time having his wave. Louie, oh, for sure. When did y'all, uh, so y'all decided, like, to come up with Reckless Renegade? Like, what was that the name of y'all label? Yeah, that was the name of our label. Um, when did y'all create that, and how did that form? Okay, so Reckless created that, I would say, around 2013, when I was locked. I was booked. Yeah. Right, but we used to still communicate over the phone, and he got booked too. But he got out before me. Um, he created it and he bought it to me. Like, look, cause I got out in like 2015, and he like, man, dude, you finna take this rap shit serious, dude. Like, you can't keep going to jail. He like, man, I, I'm having some little motion on this shit. I can't do it without you, flat out. He like, I can't do it without you, man. I need you there with me. You my cousin. You don't. I really trust for real You know what I'm saying We ain't gotta pick no sides We ain't gotta be on this side We ain't gotta be on that side We wreck this renegade We us You know what I'm saying You fuck with who you fuck with You fuck with the BDs I fuck with who I fuck with Like people just gonna accept us Or they not That's why we could smoke or gun smoke You either gonna smoke with us Or you gonna get some smoke from us You know what I'm saying So And that's my cousin Loyalty always does Love I'm shit Come on let's do it Fuck it so who was Reckless Renegade? It was just you and him? Or? Me and him. <laughs> <laughs> we was the Renegades. That's, but as time yeah. went on, you know, more people was you know, fucking with it. Um, my little brother, uh, Spank D, was always with me. So he was by default Reckless Renegade, free Spank D. Yeah. Um, you know, he had a few guys that he fucked with. It was with the movement. But so was, was that, like, shocking to people that y'all didn't want to take sides or, or were doing your own thing? or? And that's the thing, right? That was something that was overlooked back then, but it, it was a big riff, right? A lot of people d- wasn't happy about it mm. um, because you got to remember, Rico was with a movement that my people wasn't too excited about back then. Because he right? was with the GD movement, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. They was- weren't excited about that. <laughs> they like, what you doing? You, you tripping, bro. Yeah. You tripping. I'm like, man, it's my cousin. But... Off the respect and the love that my, my people have for me, they honored it. And they had riffs with other neighborhoods behind that because they like, damn, y'all supporting that? Yeah. And, you know, my people like, man, that's bro. Man, we rocking with whatever you rocking with. And um, at this time, it's hit him up out. That's, did he remix it yet? Because I know that brought some extra shit to you because if, if y'all was having beef, just uh, by yeah. affiliation. Yeah. So as soon as he <laughs> dropped that song, it had to go crazy. Woo! 
Hit him up. Hit him up. Uh, hit him up. Has has started some shit. All right. So it's break. some stories that people don't know about. Yeah. Give us some hit stories him. about hit how I hit him up. up. Were, were you out of jail when it dropped? I was out of jail when it dropped. I was right. literally in the studio with him. We in the studio. Um, a Don Rob studio. Shout out Don Rob. And Rico and man, rest in peace, Unc. Unc was there, and he's and Rico like, man, hey, cuz, thinking about dropping this Trump thing, about recording this track, man. I'm about to remix this, this, this track, man. And I'm finna this the whole I'm finna Chicago do my shit. What you think? He told me straight up, man. If you say don't do it, I ain't gonna do it. I say, nigga, fuck the nigga, drop that shit. What you be? Music is supposed to be creative, right? Yeah. We entertainers, right? We entertaining, right? Man, that's your craft, man. Drop that shit. If mm. they feel some type of way, they feel some type of way, man. Hey, and anyway, whatever happened behind it, you know, I'm rocking, I'm rolling. I haven't listened to that song in so long, but was he just dissing everybody or was it strictly people that he had no, issues he with? No, he dissed, dissed everybody. everybody. Okay. All sides, like, <laughs> every side, he just dissed everybody. I think the I first go song the wasn't, shit. the first diss was about Lil Reese, right? Yeah. First man, off, oh, first Reese, yeah, like, yeah. and then I think Reese, he asked, all right, so when that song came out, what was the immediate backlash from either your homies or anybody? Like, who was the first person you was like, oh, yeah, it's some backlash coming from behind this shit. I'm not going to, it's like everybody had something to say at that time. Yeah. Everybody but I feel like the real artists, right, knew it was like shit just music, man. It's in it. cause it was like it was like uh what a time to be alive moment. Right? It's like Chicago history right there. Like yeah. that's mm. something that when you speak on Chicago music, history of Chicago, you're gonna talk about that. You're gonna talk about, hey, I remember when Rico Reckless dissed the whole city, he pulled the fifty cent. Right? Yeah. That's the back cause that that was our favorite rapper growing up, mm -hmm. fifty cent. So he's like, man. I'm about to do it, and, it, and we understood that it's entertainment, man. Mm. We ain't really dissing them on some fuck your dead homie shit. Man, we finna rap. Y'all understood shit. it was entertainment, but not everybody he dissed understood that it was no. entertainment. Some of them took it serious. And 50 no, Cent did. was dissing like a bunch of rappers, not like yeah. warring gang members. But the war, no, okay, so hit him up. The Warren gang members were rappers right. at the time. Everybody dissed in that, in that song were but rappers. You know, 50 Cent yeah. dissing like Fat Joe and Lil' Kim and shit, right? I don't even remember if Fat Joe was in it. But he's just like talking about a bunch of people that realistically were probably not as much of a, a worry. As, and also, well, I mean, that was early in 50's career before he was like insulated from a lot of drama and shit. But that was the primary influence. Of it. So that started a lot of shit. And so are you kind of having to do clean up on that? Trying to keep it shit cool, or I mean, I'm a respectable young man in the city of Chicago, <laughs> right? So I'll just say I, I got I got a few phone calls, mm. and um and we and we uh had some respectable conversations. Yeah, right? you said some stories have in mind. I give us a story that we probably ain't heard behind that that you could tell, obviously. Um. See, the key word is that I could tell. Yeah. <laughs> There's some things I probably can't tell, uh, right? right? Um, but um, A lot of times when you say, hang out with Reckless, he'll, he'll tell you a little story here and there. That yeah. It's the kind of say, stuff you're not uh, supposed to repeat. Clean up crews was around, if anything, were to go too far left. I you know what it. I'm saying? Like, it's, it's on, we on some, we peaceful, man. We on some, we having fun. It's entertainment, but like, we not going to be threatened by anybody. Like, we, ain't nobody going to, we're not just about to let nobody do nothing to us. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So if anything so shall happen to go too far left, we prepare for what comes with it. We, mm. you know, we was prepared for what came with it when we dropped. Around what year is that when y'all dropped that? This is 2016. That's uh, about like four years after y'all really started rapping, right? Yeah. And like 2016. Th that was like the same year that Rico traveled to L.A. To, in right search of Soldier the Boy. Soldier Boy situation, yeah. And were you there for that? I was there for okay. every situation. I was right there. I was always the one just in the shadows. I ain't going to say too much. I ain't going to do too much camera, but oh, I'm here. Right. I'm here. And if it's so should happen to go too left. So what, what was the plan the with that? Like from your perspective, what what were you guys going to LA for? Um, to be honest, we went we were going to LA for something totally different. We didn't go to LA mm. for Soldier Boy per se, but it just so happened that he was teething at that time. Mm. So it's like shit. We huh? Yeah, you know we not we not regular regular people, right? And you don't know who's connected to who, right? So it's like. We can get to you because you don't know who we connected to. Mm. You think you safe where you at, but you don't even know. Like, we not just no regular guys. You know, sometimes you don't let your right hand know what your left doing. 
right? So um, the essence of power is knowing when to use it. You don't know how powerful we are. That was, to me, that was when I really got familiar with Reckless because I remember academics posting like, you know, 12 fucking videos about all the different little things that Reckless was getting into while he was out here. I remember watching every single one and just being like, what the fuck? This dude's crazy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, but I feel like shit. That's his name, right? Reckless, right? Yeah. He he was living up to his name, and I was around. You know, 